Bubsy the Bobcat is one of, if not the most hated mascot in the history of video games. Created in the early 90s as an answer to Sonic the Hedgehog, Bubsy had a string of solo adventures that received a harsh reception from critics and consumers alike, resulting in the franchise becoming dead and buried alongside other abandoned outcasts from the 16-bit era until today. Is there a veterinarian in the audience? Halloween 2017 appropriately marks the unexpected but eagerly anticipated return of Bubsy from the grave. Yes, the impossible is now possible and dreams can come true, so I've decided to celebrate this glorious occasion by taking a retrospective look back on the roots of Accolade's notorious catchphrase spouting orange furball. Bubsy was birthed onto the gaming scene in May 1993 with the release of his debut entry, the cleverly subtitled Claws Encounters of the Furred Kind. Primarily crafted by series creator Michael Berlin, Claws Encounters treads territory that had already been firmly trodden by Mario and Sega's Blue Blur, but does so in a unique and quirky manner. The simple story pits the titular feline against the woolly alien invaders, and the core play mechanics take heavy inspiration from the aforementioned godfathers of the genre with a heaping helping of hilarious one-liners tossed into the mix for taste. Hey, I thought I saw Elvis back there. What could possibly go wrong? Shouldn't that be fearless? Uh-oh. Bubsy's debut features a presentation comparable to its rivals with impressive level design, vividly detailed backgrounds enhanced by parallax scrolling effects, and an accompanying soundtrack that perfectly fits the tone of each stage. Nevertheless, Claw's Encounters of the Third Kind has been doomed with an unfairly negative reputation due to a few minor flaws, but the fortunate aspect of this curse is that the prices have remained pretty low over the years, and I'd absolutely recommend the severely underrated Genesis and SNES side scroller to anyone who's even slightly curious. It's worth it for the cheesy humor alone. Continuing onward into the fourth console generation is the less imaginatively named Bubsy 2, which was distributed to store shelves in October 1994. Bubsy 2 follows directly in the formula established by its predecessor, but refines upon it. The linear format of the first game is replaced with an overworld selection screen, and the encountered enemies are widened from the woolies to include professional pigs, walking Egyptians, and whatever the hell that is. The graphics are quite a step up from the Accolade original, and the bonus areas and flying segments are a welcome addition, but the controls and overall feel aren't as tight, the level layouts can be confusingly complicated, and the music, at least on the Genesis, is a tinny train wreck. The King of Denial theme in particular is an erratic mess with fluctuating tempos that rush and drag all over the place. I have no idea how something this poor could have made it past the QA testers, but it's unfortunately indicative of what's to come. Bubsy 2 is an admirable sequel that implemented some clever new ideas, but the wacky spark of creativity that fueled Claw's encounters is largely absent, and the humorous element that remains feels kind of hollow in comparison. It's still decent enough to pass my recommendation criteria, but I'd strongly suggest opting for the superior initial installment for anyone but completist collectors. The next portion of this review should technically be focused on Fractured Furry Tales, but I haven't gotten around to picking up a copy of that in spite of owning an Atari Jaguar, so that means we've reached the final stop on our trip for the Bothersome Bobcats back catalog. Without further ado, it gives me no pleasure to reintroduce the title that single-handedly sealed the franchise's coffin for over 20 years. Here it is. The nightmare fuel that will keep you awake on this horrifying holiday, Bubsy 3D. The Voldemort of the gaming sphere, better known as Bubsy 3D, was fittingly released on this very day in 1996. 
Bubsy 3D was one of the pioneers of the shift into third dimensional platforming, but unlike Mario 64, it has not aged well at all. The concept of the war with the Woolies was carried over from the earlier adventures, but the charm and wit has been swapped in favor of primitive proto PS1 visuals, unmemorable music, an annoying voice cast, and atrociously awkward controls. Bubsy 3D preceded the arrival of the DualShock and its implementation of the twin analog sticks, so all of the character and camera movements are handled by the D-pad, and that combined with the loose slippery feeling makes for an aggravating blood pressure raising journey from start to finish. I've already condemned this egregious offender in the IUPG court, and revisiting it for this special confirmed that I made the right call. Bubsy 3D just might be the worst game that I've ever played and only Ruin and misery will come to anyone who seeks to experience the nightmarish horrors for themselves, so stay as far away as possible from this soul-sucking demon to preserve your sanity. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Uranus! Was it something I said? And that was all she wrote for the franchise. Or so we thought. Bubsy 3D was a terrible note for the sassy protagonist to go out on, but thankfully this mistake can finally be corrected with Accolade's latest project, Bubsy the Wooly Strike Back for PC and PS4. Be sure to come back for my super excited review to see how well the Bobcat transitioned into the modern gaming scene, but until then, this is Matt, aka Cygnus Destroyer, aka the guy who's hoping that Bubsy gets the redemption he deserves, signing out. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, the boxes on the screen right now will lead to some more of my videos, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my avatar in the bottom right hand corner. Thanks again!